Okay, all right, we're ready. It's 632. Uh, let's open the public meeting here. Uh, uh, posted with uh, accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 3820B, the proceeding will be videotaped and rebroadcast by Area 58. The time is 632, according to that um, TV. Okay, the first uh, discussion, and possible well, we're not voting on this, but it's the open meeting law, and I put in a packet for you people. And let me just get rid of this. How do you start? Tom Bott's instructions. Everybody sees Roger Flack up there, let me know. Okay. Okay. Roger has all the uh, yeah, log he login does. information. Yeah, and he said he, okay. he would uh, actually be able to come on. And I told him, go for it. So um, things can happen. You know, he's at his off at work. Well, the guy that was just here, was that the is IT he, guy? Yeah. Yes. He said that there's a chance we could lose him we could anyway lose him. because of the planning. Oh, building. connecting to the, that. Okay. Okay, well, let's go. Um, all right, let's get going here. Uh, the open meeting law, the first on the agenda is uh, Bob Belbin, and thank you, sir, Bob. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, Bob uh, did come back because uh, when he came the first time, uh, Savory and I guess others had asked him, please come back. We all had more to discuss, especially the second one, and we'll be talking about that. That's what this begin will be, and we'll go from there. So. The email came back from uh, Greg Corbo on March 5th <clears throat> with the, that second complaint. And <clears throat> the, there is facts and discussion, and I'm sure you people read it. Uh, and what uh, I want to begin reading is, it's number two. We declined to review the allegation that the board made a misrepresentation in its response to the complaint's previously filed complaint. The board's interest in retaining Sharon Clark was the subject of another open meeting law complaint Robert Belbin filed with the board on August 7th. Upon review of the August 7th complaint, we found that the board violated the open meeting law by posting a notice for its August 1st meeting that was insufficiently specific. In the complaint now before us, Mr. Belbin alleges that the board made misrepresentations in its response to the August 7th complaint, exposing it to criminal prosecution. The Division of Open Government is tasked with enforcement of the open meeting law, and we decline to review this allegation. To the extent that the complainant asks that we consider newly discovered evidence in support of the allegations of the August 7th complaint, we decline to do so. We already resolved the August 7th complaint based on the information that was then available and provided to this office. Conclusion. For the reasons stated above, we find that the board violated the open meeting law by deliberating outside of a posted meeting. We order immediate and future compliance with the law's requirements, and we caution that similar future violations may be considered evidence of intent to violate the law. As the board did not take action at the August 1st meeting to retain Ms. Clark as a consultant, we order no further remedial action. We now consider the complaint addressed by this determination to be resolved. This determination does not address any other complaints that may be pending with our office or the board. Please feel free to contact the division at 617-963-2540 if you have any questions. Now, I guess we can open it up. Bob, I'm going to tell you as you read down my, the agenda, which I'm sure you've done, I began investigating the complaint with the Attorney General's office as well, and also the town procedures. Uh, as far as the town procedures, there's obviously some issues there. I didn't go too far, Bob, because we have a new town administrator, which I believe they're going to appoint tonight, and all that it, yeah. we could be back there. 
So, as far as uh, the open meeting law complaint, is it okay if I continue? Okay, fine. What I want to begin, though, before I talk to you about that complaint, on the February 20th, 2024, we had a lot of minutes here. And this one particular one I want to read to you because it really starts to open up the door as far as an OML uh, complaint form. And it says, or he says, Mr. Belvin, I work nights. It's a hardship for me to come to meetings. I do watch the meetings as I want to know what is going on in my town. You may not like that I do do that or that I use Facebook, but we don't have a town newspaper anymore. Facebook is our town newspaper now. I have the right to say what I want and what I feel. As an elected official, you have to be very careful when you make erroneous statements. Mr. Maha, he says, I don't make those, but you do, Ms. Mr. Belvin. Now, this is the part I want you to pay attention to. Mr. Belvin, when I file a complaint, they need to be done in a certain time frame, and if late, the Attorney General's office will not review it. Mr. Maha, most of what you are doing is frivolous. If you have an issue, why don't you just come, this is important, why don't you just come and talk to us instead of filing those official complaints? You come up with the same resolve much quicker and everyone would be happier. Now, Mr. Belbin comes back and says, and this is where I want you to pay attention, the Attorney General's office says that when a complaint is filed, the board and or person is supposed to reach out to the complainant. My phone number and email are on the complaint. I have no problem working with the boards. When you just go to Corbo and he writes that I should be sanctioned, I'm going to respond to that. And Mr. Maha says, and how did you become the self-appointed open meeting law police? Stop the lecturing. Let me stop there, okay? Now, I investigated and I took that information that you said, Bob, and I went back to the attorney generals and I said, I need an open law complaint form and I want to see what it says, okay? And it says in the instructions for filing a complaint, it says for, <clears throat> it tells you what to do for a municipal public body, and it says for all other public bodies, which we are, you must submit a copy of the complaint to the chair of the public body. If the public body does not respond within 14 business days and does not request an extension to respond, contact the division for further assistance. Let me do a little bit more. On page, this is the actual form, but on page two of that form, it says, number three, sub, and I'm talking about, it's talking about the complaint, and it says, submit your complaint to the public body. This is what it says. The complaint must be filed first with the public body. First, okay, I'm repeating it. Not what you said, but what it says here. If you have any questions, please contact the Division of Open Government by calling 617-963-2540 or by email to the open meeting at state.ma.us. Okay. So I want the committee all to have a chance to go back and talk to you, especially Savory, who had an idea or a thought Pat Maha said it right in the, in the minutes that he was asking you to come back and talk to us first. And then I read you this form, and the form said it, you must, you must uh, send that complaint to the public body, and we never got it. Now, you could argue that you came in and you gave it to the select board, and I don't know what you did. I think that's my first question. Where did you send the complaint form to as far as the public body? The reality is we only got information from the Attorney General. That's the only time we knew about the complaint and where it was going and what he was going to be doing. So let me open it up. 
we want to know about it. So the board doesn't have an office. The board doesn't have a, um, a person full-time working for you. The town of Carver here, through the Board of Selectmen and the town administrator's office, that's where I drop it off, all right? Their responsibility now is to provide it to you guys. You That's dropped it. it off where? At the Board of Selectmen's office. You did. Okay. Their responsibility is to submit it to you guys. All right, at that point. Who and when? Where does it say that? What? I said who and when. Uh, I'd have to go out to my truck and grab the paperwork to find out because I have it time stamped. Okay. Of when they received it. So it's all time stamped when I got it and dropped it off there. Okay. So that's that's where I drop it off. All right. The town clerks is no longer the record keeper True. anymore. True. Okay. So therefore, um, the board of selectmen's office is a record keeper for the town. That's right. Okay. So that's where I'm dropping them off for now on is up there. Okay. okay. That way it covers everyone. It's time stamped in, and they know. Okay. Fine. Thank you, Mr. Belvin. Have a good day. So no let me let me just interject and hold on, Savory. I know you're going to say something. But let me just interject because I had responses back from the AG's office. I wrote my own, and if you read the bottom part of the email, guys and girls, uh, you would see that the, she wrote back. And let me just read it because what you said is true. And what you said, when I read it, you'll see that we don't have the proper communication contact. Our web page doesn't have a contact information. That's what's going to happen. I'm meeting with Tom Bott on the 17th, and we're going to go over that. So we're going to make it. If you look at the select board, and you were a select board member, right? When you were there on that page, any one of those people, you click on it, you can send them a message and all kinds of paperwork and everything. You can just give it to them. If we had that, that at least a piece of that procedure, right, would circumvent you having to go up there, right, you would, I'm hoping, would then, if that was the case, you would have that available to you. But let, let me not go on too far. Let me just read what the OJ, the Attorney General said, and let then we'll let you guys go for it. Joanna, I am following up on our phone call yesterday afternoon. I understand you were going to call me back today. However, I hope I may be able to clarify matters. I understand your concern that the open meeting law complaint apparently was not sent directly to you as the chair of the Carver Redevelopment Authority Board. Instead, the complaint somehow made its way to the town's attorney who arranged for the board to meet to review the complaint and the attorney also incurred fees to coordinate and prepare the response to the complaint. You would have preferred to have an opportunity to address the matter without involving the attorney. Parenthesis. You also express concerns regarding the process the town uses for responding to public records request in the parenthesis. The open meeting law requires that a complaint be sent to the public body. True. In this case, it's not clear precisely where the complaint was initially sent, though it somehow made its way to legal counsel and then to you and your board. It is not uncommon for a complainant to send their complaint to a town clerk or a town administrator or other staff member with a request that the complaint be forwarded to the public body. Submitting the complaint that way does not violate the open meeting law. I myself could not find any contact information for you or for the RDA board on the RDA's website. It sounds like your concern is with the process within the town for handling correspondence and complaints and involving attorneys. However, that is not something our office can address. So Bob, you're covered. You did what you, you gave it to the, to the town administrator and but it wasn't carried on. It didn't come to us. He just handed it right off to the, uh, and it was our, if it was our choice to go to attorney, that would have been our choice, but it really wasn't. So guys, feel free to ask Bob or Bob. You can counter if you want, but Savory, 
I, I want to just address first the um, uh, you bring into the select board. Um, you were a member of this board for a number of years, the RDA. You know that our executive director is the town planner, and he is the most there's the person with the most direct contact with us as the RDA. Why would you not have brought it to the town planner instead of the select board? That would have given it a better chance of landing on Joanna's desk than on Greg Corpo's. I was told that he didn't want the position of executive director and I didn't think he took the position of executive director. Okay. That, uh, that's what I was told. That's why I didn't right. want to bother him. And I know, I know that uh, once you drop it off in there, they're supposed to submit it to the board. They're supposed to direct any communication, i.e. the select board's office, which has the records keeper in there, mm -hmm. all right? They're supposed to deliver it to the board. If they didn't deliver it to the board, I'm sorry. It would be just like someone filing a lawsuit against the RDA. They're going to come in and give it to the town clerk's office. And up to the town clerk, she's going to turn around and say, okay, fine, go upstairs and go talk to them. And they're going to turn around and say, okay, fine, we'll accept it for them and then send it to you. So as Joanna already said, it's not, it's the process that, that's here that's not available right. at that time. Hopefully it changes, and I think it will change in the future. Okay? But that's why I didn't do it. All right, let me ask you another question. You are also a board, a uh, select board member. What is, uh, as, as an entity, what is the select board's view of their relationship with the RDA or what they feel their relationship with the RDA should be? Do they, because we're quasi-local. So you guys are a separate entity. Right. You're not associated with the town. Okay. In all actualities, you are a separate entity. You, you, you're not like working with the board of selectmen or, or any other entity. You're working as a sole proprietor, all right, for the redevelopment yeah. authority. Granted, the beneficiaries are the town. Don't right. get, tell the beneficiaries of the town. But right. with the board of selectmen, my opinion is is that any issues or problems or suggestions that you have, okay, you get on the agenda, you put it up, and said, "This is what we want to do. This is what's going on." Okay, the relationship really shouldn't be a close-knit relationship. Well, okay, where I'm going with that is why would you expect that if the select board's idea is that we are separate from each other, why would you think that going to the select board with your complaint would get it delivered to us? Because they are the records keepers of the town of Carver. Okay, but, they, but, but, but you have to understand is where else do I bring it to, okay? Planning. But planning okay. is, you have to understand, you guys should have your own office. In total, my own thing, you should have your own office, all right? We should have had a long, well, a long time we ago. We should have a lot office. of things in this town. Okay, I understand <laughs> that, all right? I've brought it up of different places for different committees to have an office. Okay. okay. You got a police station across the street, the old one, that's got offices in there, okay? I brought it up that the rec committee, why doesn't the recreation committee use one of those? And they are, from what I heard, they're I using that. Think so. There's other offices there too that could be utilized. Um, so I mean, there are options for you guys to have a place. I even wanted to have the uh, Carver Marion Wareham Regional Refuge Disposal District brought over here too, in Carver, all right, as our office. All right, right now they're paying $100 a month, but they're gonna have to get kicked out soon from that place that they're in. And they're gonna find someplace else to go. Where? Who knows? We're not going to get it for a hundred bucks anywhere. So that's going to they're going to have to find some place to go, and it's either going to be Wareham or Cabo. But that that would be a place to hey, okay, we can drop it off here. All right. Okay. But that's the reason why, and that's the rationale I used. And okay, can we? Um, you're meeting with Tom. Yeah, on the seventeenth. Yeah. Can you find out if we have an executive director? If anyone has taken on that role since Jim left, I don't. You're, yeah, I will. Hold on. All right. Yeah, I will. Because I think it's important that we have someone who is a liaison between the town and us, because we're not a branch of the local government. We're a municipal entity. Right, and I don't think it should be a a, <clears throat> um, a, a select board inbox 
so to speak. Uh, yes, it's time stamped that it came in, but th there's not somebody in the select board who's advocating for us or who has us at top of mind to say, these people need to see this right away. So Instead, it went it ended up with KP Law. You know, they saw it before we did. So and I, I'm just, and it's not you. Yeah. It, it's, I'm just thinking that there's got to be a better way to do that so that we have an opportunity to see these things first and at least contact you or anyone else with our response to see if, as we talked about at the last meeting, we can come to an agreement before this goes any further. So with that being said, I just, it's the record keeper's responsibility all right, to direct any correspondence that comes to anybody within the town, whether it's the RDA, the planning, recreation, or whatever, it's their responsibility to provide that committee with it, whether it's an open meeting law complaint, a public records request, and I'm gonna tell you, my frustration is, when I was a select board member, is people would put in for public information requests, we don't know anything about it. Never knew anything about it that they were put in. Then come to find out, you're kidding me. Why don't you ask me? I'll give you whatever I got. That's public I information. Yeah. I have nothing to hide. I will give you whatever you want. All right? And that's the problem because some people do text messaging, other people don't. But that's a public record when you start talking about things going on within your board community commission. Emails, they use your private email. Some people don't know your town email, so they send you a private one. All right? What I always did when someone did that, I forwarded it to my town website, the town one, just to cover myself in case somebody says, hey, I heard you sent this. Yeah, it's in there. It's in there. It's always has been. So things like that, your text messaging, it's tough to do that because you got to download everything, print it all up, and then send a hard copy in here. So that is difficult, but I suggest you should turn around and capture those conversations. All right, put them in, 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 in an inbox somewhere just so you have them all of it, always available in case someone comes back and says, hey, here you go. This is what's so going on. just let me interject, uh, Savory as well. I spoke with Tom and I said to uh, the, what's his name, the guy that was here, John Neely, I said, you know, it's important that all the boards, including ours, get the same consideration that the select board have. And I said, the select board, if you take the time and you look on their page, they have a link. And any, web, uh, any member of that board has a link. And if you click on, we'll say it's you, Bob Elvin, you click on Bob Belvin, and you were a select board at the time, it would say B. Belvin, and behind the scenes, that person, whoever he or she was, could send a message, because that's all, it's all laid out. In addition, the second page of that, you can actually upload, the person could upload the content, whether it's PDF or JPEG or whatever, it's a lot of forms. And so I said to him, I have, will come on the 17th when I speak with Tom Bott. That's where I'll be driving why and we should have, and I think other boards as well, but I'm fighting for the RDA at this point. I said, the logic is there. It's not that it's not there. It's there. It just has to be lifted up and just a new page has to be created for us. But we don't, let me finish. So the, uh, John Neely said, Mrs. Layton, only the chair has an email. Nobody else. They don't need it. They don't have it. If everybody had it, I'm still clear, cleaning everything up. It's going to be over 10 grand just to have an email license for the quantity that's out there. So right now, he's taken away, and Savory, you happen to have an email because you're a, a chair too of the right. conservation. Right. So in that respect, you have a chair. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm going, and, and I'll just add in that executive director, but I am moving towards that. So Bob, if that incident happened, God forbid, to the RDA, right? You would be able to go on that RDA webpage, this is what I'm hoping, and you would see contact info, and you would see Joanna Layton, chair, and you'd click on it, and it would have all this information where you could have, or would, and will, hopefully, upload the whole entire complaint. 
and not send it to the uh, attorney and let us follow the rules that we should have followed. And if we need to have the attorney, well, that's our obligation, not yours. So if I, or it happens, and you file, and it couldn't be don't, not on us, or it could be somebody else, Bob, and you saw that contact information on the web page, would you indulge doing what I had just said? Most definitely, but you also have to understand that you can't just use a, the email system. There are some people that still aren't dealing with email. They're still printing stuff out and paperwork goes in. Um, me personally, I like a piece of paper in my hand. Um, still old school to some extent, but um, if you prefer that, that's fine. I mean, my goal here is not to file anymore. My, my goal is to get you guys educated enough, and Corbo started that. Uh, to some extent, yeah, some um, extent. But but no matter what, okay. What I discussed the last time is that if you and I want to make sure I'm clear that I was I misspoke when I said it's 30 days. You have yeah. 30 days from the time that it happens to file a complaint. So it's 30 days. It's the but in your to respond, but, but you had made you had made mention that it was up to us, the public body, to to get a hold of contact you, and it was just the reverse. Well, no, the contact is the open meeting law complaint coming to you. That's the first contact to you guys. That's what I'm talking. There's no law that says that I have to call you first and say, "Hey, I got a problem with this." All right, how you guys did that? Okay. That's not a What it says is the first contact is that open meeting law complaint that you guys get. That's right. That's okay. right. I'm that, just... And then it's up to you guys to turn around and reach out to me and right. say, hey, we did get it. Mm -hmm. We're going to address it. All right. But you can also ask questions say, hey, can we talk about this? All right. Really, can we resolve And you guys yeah. can resolve it at any level before. Well, if I had that contact information that I just described, mm -hmm. in the depth of that, I could always respond back, talk to my, you know, have the meeting and send back to you and say, come on in, we want to resolve this, or Joanna, let's, let's whatever it is, let's resolve it, or any other board for that matter, you know. So, but we're trying to, I'm going to try to change that. So the contact information would be available to whom have a files that OML so that they can so they can stop reaching out to the lawyer. I mean it costs seven hundred twenty five dollars just for him to come to create and come to that meeting. He's not done. We're gonna get another one, Pat, right? We'll get another one from him yep. for the second one. Because oh, yeah. he came he came to this uh, to another meeting. Can I ask just a quick cool question. Does this not all and I'm new to this, don't get me wrong. You know, this is long before I ever showed up here. But as a person outside of this, it seems you have a personal beef with somebody, whoever this other girl was, Clark, Joanne Clark, whatever. Sharon. You had an issue with her Sharon before, Clark. right? Sharon Clark. You had yeah, an issue with her before. Right. Just hear me out, okay? Go ahead. So you had an issue with her before, correct? Yes. Okay. And yet you keep coming back over and over to us about all this stuff because of your personal issue. No, I've actually moved on from that. To be honest, I don't really I, think you have. I think you keep coming back because you have some sort of personal you know, I, I, I vendetta. Keep coming back because I was invited. Back. I invited, and I, and I want to make sure. I, I want to make sure. I'm just telling you, as an outsider invited. who wasn't here during all that, mm -hmm. I think for you, this keeps coming back to the whole idea that you felt this lady did you wrong, right, wrong, or different. I wasn't here for any of that, but you keep coming back over and over again and keep doing this. I'm just here to say, how do we resolve this and just move on? Because you keep coming back, we keep dealing with this, we're hiring attorneys, we're costing the town money. How do we resolve this for you to make this move on? It's already You have 30 it's seconds, done. go. It's already done. I, I, to be honest, it's already done. Okay. So why are you here? Because I, I invited him. Oh, okay. We asked her. Okay. All right. I, I do want the town and you guys to do things the right way. And the way you do that is to get educated. And even when Corbo was You feel there, I'm not an educated man? No, I'm not saying. In the open meeting law, you, when Corbo was here, there were things that you know you how many town meetings I've been involved in my life? You tell me I'm not an educated man. I'm not saying you're not educated. I mean educated in the open meeting law. Okay, because when Corbo was here, I think you all turned around and said, I didn't know that. Well, that's it. I just learned something. Okay, so we can all learn things. Okay, you probably have a lot more education than I physically do. Okay, 
I, I can tell you, right? No idea. But you know what? The bottom line here is Joanne is handling it the right way is saying, let's resolve this and turn around and get a good policy and procedure put in place. Okay, let's know where things are gonna go. Get an email. I totally agree, because that was brought up. And what I was gonna say was, what I was told that all boards and committees can't because of the cost factor. It's a lot of money, all right? I think back then when I asked, I think it was like $7,000. They said we'd have to have $7,000 to get everyone an email address or whatnot, all right? So in that sense, I think you're handling it the right way. You're doing it the right way, okay? Um, you guys may not have liked what I did and how I did it, no. but the bottom line here is that you want to move on, we move on, and this is the way we do it, all right? Do I, am I going to be coming to this meeting anymore? I don't think I so. Hope <laughs> I right, hope not. All right, to be totally honest, no, because we have an understanding now that, hey, all right, I got a problem. I'll try to come to you guys, okay, but I'm still going to file my open meeting law complaint within the 30 days to cover myself, okay? But you also have to understand, okay, when you get a response, when I saw that, when you, Corporal was there and talking to you, and you guys saying that you want to go after sanctions on me, all right, you want to come after me for filing frivolous, okay, um, complaints, okay? It's your opinion that's frivolous. It's your opinion. But guess what? The Attorney General found out that what you did was wrong. Okay, it's still so frivolous. Doesn't okay. listen. The law is a law. You can't turn around and say the law is frivolous because guess what? It's there for a reason. Okay, you may not like it. I don't like some of the stupid laws we have about the Second Amendment in the state. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> but you know what? This is the way you do it. Okay, you may not like me. I don't care if you like me or you don't like me. You may not like me because of certain things that I did to friends and family of you, whatever it is. Okay. Not family, I'm sorry, I apologize. Not family, friends, okay? Because I don't even know who your family is. But no matter what, all right? I just want things done right the first time. And you make a mistake, you say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. The response that Corwin gave, that you guys instructed him to give, okay? Number one, no admission to guilt. Not one. What it said was is that, all right, because they, this was released, it's moot. It's a moot point now, because it's already been released. Well, guess what? It's not a moot point. It's that you guys did something wrong. Just admit you screwed up. I made a mistake. I'm sorry, okay? Because guess what? Those words, I sorry, you don't see in this town that often. I, I, there's probably gonna be another open meeting law complaint depending on what the selectmen do tonight. Because Joanna, you and I on this committee, we, a subcommittee was created, right? Yeah. When I was on the board. Yeah. What did we have to do? Right. Take minutes. Right. What else we have to do? We had to post the meeting. Post the meeting, yeah. Okay? Yeah. The board of selectmen created three subcommittees when they started talking to people for the um, new town administrator to go to the towns. I turned around, and what did I do? I went to the chairman, and I told him. I said, listen, you're wrong. You screwed up. All right, you guys can't do this. I showed him open meeting law complaints that were um, determinations by the Attorney General's office said, you can't, you can't do that. You have to post meetings, okay? You have to keep notes, all right? You gotta do minutes. Mm -hmm. This all, you have to know who's gonna be there at these ones, all right? How many mistakes did you make as a Board of Selectmen? Oh, I'm sure I made tons. How many times did you apologize to everybody like you're asking us to do? Oh, I did. If How many times? I'm asking. I have no idea. No idea. How long were you on the board? For three years. Three years. Yeah, for three years. But and I mean, did there's things anybody that else put up this vehement? Oh yeah, we had of a complaint oh, yeah. about everything you did. No, not everything. But I mean, I mean, someone do you, has a, do you understand a, the amount of money that you're expending right now to do all this stuff? Do you understand the amount of money that you guys are expending because you guys made the mistake? I think you've gone way overboard in the amount of money you're asking this town to expend over your personal beef with somebody else. And I wasn't there for a lot of this stuff, and I'm listening secondhand to a lot of this stuff, but that's my opinion. Okay. So and you keep coming right. back here, and you keep wasting people's time, and you keep expanding on attorney fees and everything else for something that you have a personal beef with. Miss, Mrs. Clark, but you keep coming back here. Why don't you just work it out on your own and move on? I was invited. 
<laughs> you say she's coming back. I'm okay. just saying it's my it's my point. I you know, and I, again, I'm new here, so I'm just telling you. I, I just think you have a personal thing with somebody else, and you need to work it out. It's worked out, but like yeah. I said before, I already said it's worked out. Okay, now it's turn around and and make sure that what's being done in the future is done right. Then you don't have to deal with me. Because there's nothing for me to deal with. So I just want to take one thing. Somebody I write heard, that down, by the way. I heard, yeah. You're never allowed back in here again. <laughs> I'm kind of joking here. No, I'm She's sorry. Uh, Shulam. But you just made a statement. Um, I'm going to lose my train of thought here in a minute. Um, you would file the complaint anyway. I, I, was it anyway? Because you want to you wanna make sure you're within the 30 days. My point, or well, my question to you is if you go ahead and let's go back to what our complaint, your complaint was about us. If you had filed the complaint anyway and come back to us to talk to us about it, how do you re how do you take that back? Do you write another thing? So the way you handle that is when the when I write the complaint out, I send you the complaint. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the notification that there's a complaint. Right. Okay. Right. Your responsibility is to in a public session acknowledge the complaint, right. okay, and resolve it. Talk to it. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, can you come in? Can we talk about this? Mm -hmm. All right. Or you guys can turn around and say, we want Joanna to talk to the person or Savory to talk to the person and say, hey, how can we resolve this? Okay. At any time, the complainant can withdraw the complaint. At any time. You just sign, you sign a letter that says, I'm withdrawing the complaint. Here you go. No problem. You have, is that another form? Not another form. You just write it down. Because you'll have... The, the, the public would body have, would have the to. Who's, body have said, here you who, go. It's already resolved. We don't would have to you expect further. the public body to initiate? Say it is resolved. Would you expect between the public body and the complainant, i.e., yourself versus RDA? Would you expect RDA to come up with a letter stating that it was resolved? You'd sign off on it, or how? I, how you have to create I, it? I would, in my opinion, I would create it because okay. I'm the complainant. Right. We discussed it. We resolved it. Okay, fine. Okay. All right. Say it's you didn't you didn't post your meeting minutes within thirty days. Okay. Okay, and you waited four months to do your meeting minutes. Okay. File a complaint. You turn around and says, you know what, I'm sorry. All right, we got a lot going on. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn around and apologize in open session and that uh, we're going to do better to get these meeting minutes posted and uh, filed correctly within the time frame that we're supposed to. Okay? okay, so that's when you turn around. And I would be the one saying, okay, fine, here you go. I'll write a letter saying I withdraw my complaint. Thank you very much. Have a good day. So what what do I have as a record? Do I sign off on that letter also so I can comply because if... Well, well no. I mean, no. It's just no, I'm just, taking you, the complaint. Okay. I'm saying the complaint's been resolved. Okay. That, those are the things. The complaint's been resolved. Here you go. It doesn't have to go any further. Okay. Okay. I get a copy of the complaint. You would get a copy of the complaint. You'd get a copy of that letter. Right. Okay. And then you talk about it in open sense that right. we received this. Right. We've resolved this at this stage. Right. Okay. And then you can turn around and take all that information because you still have to file it with the attorney general's office. Okay. Just saying that you've received this, all right, but you got another letter saying it's already resolved. Yeah. Right. So they don't have to do anything. So right. they have a record that a claim was filed, it's got sent in, it's not gonna go anywhere. Right. All right. Okay. They're gonna turn around and send you a letter saying thank you very much for resolving this. Okay. Saved us a lot of time right. and energy. Great. And, and energy. All right. Because I'm ninety nine point percent positive that you still have to file it with the attorney general's office and a response. I'll, re I'll, a response I'll, to I'll make sure. <laughs> but, but no matter what, it's just the fact that, okay, you can have that discussion one-on-one. -on -one, that's right, right, and that's what and I'm one, looking for. And I didn't do it because you're, you're correct at first. You're correct about the whole thing about Sharon Clark. I started as that, okay? But then when I got the public records request in and I saw that Joanna had sent it, and this is what I want to say, in that email, she, you stated that you were talking about the whole board. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion is, you talked to everyone before this and said, are you supportive of Carrie Sharon Clark as the um, consultant? Right. Okay, that's what it looks like to me. 
when she when you turn around and you write as a chairman says my board okay wants to do this okay that means either they had other communication outside the open meeting law and talked about it individually all right which is against the open meeting law because you can't do that all right or there was other type of communication out there that you guys all talked about this and whatever but once that email went out to everyone in my opinion and you don't like it but i consider that is that it's it's a conspiracy amongst all you guys all right to violate the open meeting law and to turn around and you don't like it, i know that but really it changes your opinion as a board member when you have the chairman saying that we want to hire Sharon Clark as the consultant. Okay, the way I read that is that, huh, okay, well, this doesn't look good because you guys are working behind the scenes trying to get her in as a consultant and whatever. But you have to understand, we also have videotape and the, and the lawyer, Mr. Corbo, was very precise when he wrote that information back to, this is the first alleg uh, allege, he wrote it all back and he was very precise. He wrote exactly the space on that tape that that attorney general would would could look at it and see that we didn't hire her. Yes, there was a conversation with her, but we did not hire her. And so that misrepresentation, number one, the second allegation was, and I admit it was false, when I constructed the sentence back. It was wrong, and I just did an and, and it just looked like if you read it, you would think that, yeah, we did this, you know, but we didn't. And a part of that allegation, I, I don't know if it's first or second, but I ended up putting all the people's names on it. So it really, it's kind of opened up the door to a meeting. So that was another violation, or supposedly a violation. No, it was. Yeah, well, okay. that, that's for sure. You just read it, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so now that we've got... A clear understanding. You've heard from different people from the board as well. I'm not done. You're not done. Oh, good. No. Oh, good. He's good. mad. The Red Sox lost him. <laughs> I know. Seven to one. Really? Yeah. After a road yeah, trip beat him, yeah. they won seven out of eleven. All right. Yeah. Let's give the floor back to, to right. Savory. Um, uh, I've known you probably for nine or eight or nine years since I moved to Carver full time, almost eleven years ago. Uh, we served together on this board for a while. Um, you have frustrated me quite a few times, but always within your rights, what you do. Uh, I am a, uh, a believer that, that people who keep an eye on government like you do are necessary and are helpful. And I think that because you are in this town, people are aware that they're being watched, which I commend you for, and and I think that it's helpful to the town. Um, after the first allegation, the first open meeting law complaint about the fact that we did not put in the agenda the names of the people, you were right. We did not know we had to do that, and as you said, when we sat here with Mr. Corbo and he told us that, and we all said, wow, we so you did serve a purpose. You helped educate us. The second open meeting law complaint about the email is what I have issue with. Not with the physical open meeting law complaint, but the events surrounding it. And I firmly believe there was a better way to do this. The email that Joanna sent was one of her first duties as chairwoman of this board. The email was sent during the holidays. The email was sent when Joanna was going through some personal things that probably took a lot of her mind. Those are the mistake that she made of putting everybody's name on that email was probably an oversight that just happened because of everything else going on in her life. And I know you've known Joanna for a long time. Yeah. And I believe that there could have been a little bit of humanity there that wasn't there. 
that you would come to Joanna first and say, look, this is what happened. You're fully within your rights in what you did. I just feel personally that it was mean-spirited to go after Joanna the way you did, not only with the open meeting law complaint, but on, on uh, Facebook. Um, that's all I really want to say to you, and uh, I don't think that you're generally that kind of a person. I, I have not seen that from you over the years, but this struck me in a different way. This struck me as being hurtful to someone who I respect and like, and I think you do too, because the two of you seem to get along quite a bit. And I received the email that she sent. Did I look at who she sent it to? No way. I got an email from Joanna, I read it, went on to the next thing in my day. I didn't know she sent it to everybody. I don't think anybody else on this board, I can't speak for them, but I don't think anybody else on this board saw the, the to list, the address list. Anyway, I think that there were a lot of extenuating circumstances that, in my mind, should have warranted at least a phone call to Joanna saying, this is what I found. This is what I'm planning to do. Can we come to some kind of discussion about it first before I make this public to the entire town? That's all I really want to say about this. And it's, and it's this particular one only. It's not on any of the other ones that you've done. The other ones, the other open meeting law complaints you've done, I find have been valid. And I'm hoping in the future we have a better ability to discuss these beforehand because I don't think there's anybody on this board who wants to um, go against an open meeting law. We don't want a violation as much as you don't really want to put them in. But uh, we're not, we have nothing to hide here. I just feel that when Joanna sent out the email to everybody with the punctuation error that made it read in a different manner, mm -hmm. that that should not have been public knowledge to the entire world of Carver before Joanna was notified personally about it. That's all I really want to say about it. Okay. All right? Okay. okay. I guess, Pat, we're all set? I'm all set. You're all set? You're all set? I, I think we've heard enough. I think we've talked okay. a lot about that. So. The bottom line, thank you very much. You're absolutely correct, by the way. Um, on the 17th, I'll be working with Tom Bond okay. uh, to actually uh, talk about executive director. That was one of your uh, I think requests. we need to have we one. We need to have one. Yeah, okay, really we need really. to have one. And we're all, I'm also going to go forward with contact information, so that makes sure. And then we ha will have a new, like tonight, they're promoting a, a new town administrator. That would be the first thing I'm going to do, is make an appointment with Tom to take me upstairs to meet the town administrator and to work through uh, processes called open meeting law. Because last three years, cost the taxpayers over $15,000 with open meeting laws, not all of which you did. I'm sure it was the lawyers or whomever that did these kind of things as well, that they need education as well. And, um, but the process is wrong. There is no process. That's the problem. When I spoke to Michelle Sheehan, she's the record yeah. keeper, she told me, Joanna, I take a path this way, that way, this way, that way. And that's the way it goes. And once it leaves my hands, and it goes, and it goes here, there, and everywhere, and it lands upstairs in the select board's office, those are the only people with that would have sent that over to the uh, uh, attorney's office. That would have to be there. So just to, I don't know if you know, but um, Shelby and Michelle are the two records access keepers for the town car. Oh, OK. They both are. Uh, because one of the issues that we had was that I put an information request in, it didn't get responded with 10 times because someone was sick and the, there was no one else covering, so it got missed and everything. So therefore, it's like, okay, fine, we need to do. So the town did respond to that. Shelby was on maternity leave. I'm right. sorry. She told yeah. me that. Michelle told me that. Yeah. Right. So she, Michelle said she was sick with COVID, so she was out. And Okay. All right. <laughs> 
You didn't hear that. So needless to say, um, but yeah, things are changing, yeah. all right, to some extent. Okay, I think you're doing a good, good job responding. Just last thing about this, and I'm done. You're done. I'm okay. done, is how Corbo responded to this, okay? That's what irritates the heck out of me when you spend that much money to turn around and not admit you did something wrong because I have to say that he gave poor advice to Sharon Clark in the first place, all right, which started this whole process. If you really want to go back, he gave poor advice. We should never have paid for it, and we did pay for it for poor advice, and we're not getting. So when he gives bad advice, we need to turn around and ask for rebates. Because I'll tell you what, it's bad. Well, it's, I'm not doing that. That's not Well, my I mean, the rule. bottom line here is that, I mean, they're supposed to represent you in, in the best interest. And sometimes the best interest is to say, hey, I'm sorry, I screwed up. Well, that would be the Attorney General when they take the complaint. They're the ones who look at it, and they're the ones who make their decision. And, you know, really. But, that's how it goes. That, that's that's an ITA. Is that how it will go down? All right, I guess we... Bob, I don't know if you were still good. here at our last meeting, but um, Joanna has gotten um, Jill and Michelle from the permitting department to kind of act as a uh, pseudo... Uh, um, yeah. Uh, they're going to be putting packets together yeah. like they did when you were back on yeah. board. Yeah. They oh, went okay. away with Rick. Right. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, gonna, I, I just, I want to, excuse me, I just want to praise Tom Bott. I called up and I said, Tom, I got this issue. Who do I talk to? Is it you? Absolutely. He said, I'm the OML dude. <laughs> and so he created all these instructions for, of course, Roger never came in to, to uh, for Zoom as well. And he said to me, um, we need to straighten that out. Because I, he knows, because I sent him the email with that clip of what the Attorney General had said, that paragraph I read to you. And so he knew. And I told him to start investigating different things. Well, you know what he found out? That, found out that it was RDA.contact. And then he writes a letter, doesn't know who it belongs to, and it goes RDA.contact. And, and his email said, who be it? And of course, it's me. Yes. And so I write back to him, and I said, it be me. He goes, really? And I go, yeah. Here's why and how we got it. So I gave him the background of that as well. Now, I'm sure that John Neely, the IT guy, has got some ideas on how to change that. Yep. So that's part of the contact information. So we're going to have to rectify all that too. So we're going to have a different page. So hopefully, I don't know if it costs money. You know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they tell us. You know, but we'll get it straightened out. Everything down. does. Everything costs money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll try to straighten so out. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. What we think. And I'm just Thanks for coming. Wade Street. If I could talk about Wade Street when you're when you yeah. get to that point. Oh. <sighs> The Wade yeah, Street. <laughs> the Wade Street. That's the next, right? There's a lot of That's time. the next one. That's the next one. The uh, Wade Street and deed acceptance, Savory Moore. Uh, let me just open this up to the, we had, what, I, 12. We had 12 steps that the, yes. that the um, our attorney had asked us to do. And uh, I did my part. And we the committee authorized me to. Uh, we had to authorize the transfer. We did that. The uh, carver. We uh, actually voted to authorize me to sign the deed, which I did. Joanna then went and got the deed signed in front of the notary, and uh, I gave the deed over to Savory. Savory, now you your part. You want to tell? Yeah. Me? yeah. Hold on. Um, I brought the deed to CONCOM. CONCOM voted to accept the property. Uh, the three, um, three of the members of the CONCOM signed the acceptance at the meeting that night. Uh, myself as chair and uh, Dave as the um, vice chair um, had our, went and signed it in front of a notary uh, as we were supposed to do. Uh, the original deed and the original acceptance have gone to the select board for their signature. Next step, and this is before I went on my vacation, so I have not been back to them yet to see if they're uh, if they've signed it all. Uh, they did. I called Nancy. 
Okay, it's, it's so it's there. Yeah, All right. It's there. So uh, the select board signs the acceptance, indicating its approval. No notary is required. The original deed, which I will pick up, and the original acceptance, which is also there, are paired with the original mylar, which I have. Um, so I should have that. I should have all those three married together by tomorrow. Um, I will then call um, Kathleen yeah, O'Donnell. Right. Uh, I'll probably leave them in in town hall at the permitting department with Jill. I think with Jill. Yep. And I will ask uh, Kathleen to come and pick them up. Then she will record the documents and send the bill uh, for the recording fees for the deed and acceptance to the concom. Yeah. The. Uh, and she's. We're going to get a bill for the uh, survey. The CRA pays the rec uh, recording fee for the plan. I know what you had, you had sent an email about about us voting to uh, ex uh, to pay for our part of it, and I got that like three minutes before the meeting started, so I didn't bring it up. Is that why? No, no, oh, actually okay. no. But All right, so I just wanted to let you know I haven't seen you since yeah. I went away. Oh, that's so okay, go ahead. That's that's it. That's where we stand. There was no money involved, and so that's what the sur we did the survey, and we're paying for it. The RDA is uh, there is there was no pay involved, no transfer of monies from right. God. So we didn't need to have a warrant article, which we were told we needed to have, but our lawyer said no, that's not necessary. And w he just read you that the select board signed an acceptance. So what was your, what were you going to yeah. say? All right, number one is, I want to say thank you very much for doing that. Oh, okay. I want to thank you. Oh, you were on that when you were on the board. And the Wade Street property I am very well aware of because <laughs> I've walked it over and over again, okay? My son did a, a cleanup effort through his Eagle Scout project. Oh, I remember property. that, yeah. The huge tra uh, trailer full of trash and junk from that place that we all took out and he, he let it, all right? <clears throat> I said at that point that they were encroaching on our property and nobody on the board would turn around and say, yeah, you're right or whatever, okay? So I just wanted to, wanted to say thank you because that property has to be protected. And I know there were issues that the, the neighbor who was encroaching wanted to buy the property. I know the people on the other side wanted to buy the property. The boules. The bo I wasn't gonna put a name. I wasn't gonna put well, a name. Well, you but, can. But the other, but the other property, the um, the the new development going in. Oh, I know yeah. they wanted. Oh, the that's right. Too. That's right. All right. Yeah. And and they wanted it to build more houses. Right. That's the one reason why they wanted that area. Okay. So. Giving it to the conservation group is a good thing to do. It's protected the property, so I want to thank you very much. All right, and can you pass it along to the conservation commission? Thank you very much for accepting it. But we walked it, and we recognized how important it was to keep. And the and survey, excuse me, the survey saw the encroachment yes. and the action with the concom. I know I attended one walkthrough. They they're working on it. You know the live wire that came off the pole because they had electricity and oh for the well the concom now the survey re revealed all that yeah. and the he appro the, uh, and Savory I, did I reported it. it numerous times to the select board about their camera program up there that they put up in that post with the camera and the wires go oh, right they, up to the yeah, house yeah, and everything yeah. and they were saying that it was they were stopping drugs but. You know what? It wasn't. That wasn't the issue. I mean, they just wanted a bigger driveway, more area, and they, whatever. It's not anymore. Okay. No, they moved so, there. They had to move. That was the I, result of the survey yeah. and so forth. So I just like so. Thank you very much. I just want to. Yeah. It, it's good that that's gone and out of the way now. Yep. All right, but yeah, I, I can't say enough that. That and it's in good hands, the yes. conservation. The, the next Eagle Scout project will be a post and beam fence all the way all along that border. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I'm not part of Scouts anymore. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll find something to do. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. But, so I, I would tell you, um, uh, Savory, or ask you, Savory, now on the remaining part. Uh, 
it, you could take that action with mm -hmm. Colin uh, and, and just deliver that, and she'll come back, and you might want to be coming when she comes. I'm not sure when she's going to come. If I can. If I'll, you can. I'll ask her to let me you. know if I'm available yeah, I can be here. Yeah, and but. let her know that it would be Jill Martin's, you know, within yeah. the planning board. That will be great. So that's super. All, All right. right. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate All it. Right. Thanks, Bob. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Bob. Okay, so Have the next nice night. You too. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm sure. Uh, so the next thing is the town election is April 27th, 2024. Uh, there are two seats, and I gave you a sample ballot to see. You, you can look at the other people too, and there it's pretty pretty void, you know, if you saw that. Mm. So we have James Elliman. You took up. Yay! I'll vote for James. <laughs> we have a write in. And we know why. And one seat will be a write-in. And we could possibly get an, you know, uh, RDA, uh, five, five people have to be same signature five times on, on the, the write-in that would make it uh, a RDA member. Okay. I guess there's no questions on that, right? Nope. No questions yeah. on that? All right. Come out and vote for him. Yeah, okay, oh. yeah, we need to <laughs> The next thing is uh, a treasurer's report. I would like to have a motion to accept the treasurer's report for March 2024. I'll make that motion. I'll second. But so, so moved. He hasn't presented it. Discussion. He hasn't said anything. You sent it to us. I did send it to you. Okay. No, but he, he would like to present it. I think that's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. We usually... I know. You usually make usually, a presentation. Usually, oh, my gosh. I, I am... Let me just do that so that yeah. Susan can... Like we can, Susan like can say that. Yeah, exactly. I to, uh, see, you know, see, I have to is, print that out with my phone. This, this is why I uh, bring my iPad to all the meetings, and now I can't, i got to find it. Where did I put it? Oh, you know, then I always, I send it, it's, and now it's just, just in my sent folder. There it is. Okay, so the treasurer's report has balances as of the end of March. We have in the checking account two fifty three ninety nine, in the money market account forty nine eight zero two oh eight, and in the urban renewal plan account is one thousand two hundred eighty fifty one, and there's one outstanding check for seventy five dollars. Now, Susan, <laughs> did you send the bill in? I, I discovered that I just missed sending. I couldn't find it in my sense, and I didn't have a bill created. So wow, it's just so weird. Okay, so yeah, I reached we got out. To, okay, yeah. we got to process it this week. Yeah, my my mistake. Yeah. So he'll buy. And, did uh, we get a bill for the survey yet? Yeah, it's already paid in cash. Cash. Okay. Yep. Oh, I see it here. Excuse yep. me. Yeah. Okay. Thank. Great. All right. So I guess now, could I have a moment? Let's try that again. A motion? I'll, yeah, I'll accept. make the motion to uh, accept the um, uh, the budget report for March 2024. And I'll second. Uh, further discussion being none. All in favor? Aye. 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 The treasurer's report is accepted. The next thing was the authorized signatories for banking purpose. I had gone back to the bank about a month ago, and I didn't pay too much attention to it. But, you know, guess what? I'm going to... We're going to hold off until after the election, okay, to make sure. Sure. And that's no yeah. problem. Okay. All right? Yeah. So we'll just yeah. hold off. I do have to take, uh, like, Sharon Clark. And remember Paul Costas? Yes, I remember Paul. He's still on there, so I have to take him on. <laughs> I could make a joke, but I won't. <laughs> Wait till the camera's Yeah, on. I just won't say anything. Yeah, it's not bad. So let me just... Uh... Okay. Anything for member notes? I have none. Nope. Are you Pat? I'm good. You know, nope. It's, um, I guess we have uh, no no news from uh, Route 44. I have not heard, and uh, I didn't really ask Tom Bott about it. Um, I don't. He's going to have to be the one to rely. I personally, and I, that, this is what I wanted to ask you. And I'll bring Sharon up. Sharon knew all these people. She contacted them. I have no clue who any of these people are. Uh, if you do, 
Is that something that we you can transfer over to me? I, I, I talked to I talked to Tom about it just a little bit you know, informally, and uh, he basically said that until uh, Route 44 comes back to the planning board with some plan of what they're going to do on a particular parcel, oh, okay. that there's no reason for us really to invite them in unless just out of curiosity we want them to do the same uh, talk they gave to the planning board about what what they're doing with the um, uh, definitive subdivision plan well, which is basically just um, mm -hmm. the road and the the uh, sewer system. The, well, the we, they have to make progress on that, don't they? Well, they have to do that, and they have to make that known that it's it's approved and being done, so they can start marketing the property. So, what is the board's wish? Do we? Want well, why don't we wait till after the election? We're going to have two new members. That's right. Uh, and I think that that would be a good opportunity to bring them in and have them talk about where they stand with the project. I don't think they have to go back through the whole Hillwood history yeah, no. at this point because no. that's, that's just where it's going forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 So I would I would say that you know um, maybe we bring them in in the June meeting. Okay. You know, okay. just to ask them for an update because we're still involved. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we will be after they come up with some plans. Right. We can keep keep them. Uh, they should keep us abreast. That's really what they should do. But I agree. Wait, whatever, two months. And right. Talk Every, to yeah. Yeah, yeah, two months. Yeah, get uh, get our new members up to speed with one meeting and then have All right. the second meeting. Yeah, okay, fine. All right, anybody else? Member notes? No? All right, while well, we're all set here. Okay, minutes of the March 12th. Have anybody uh, read the minutes and want to make a motion to... Uh, uh, if there are any changes, please tell us. And no changes. No, no. changes, okay. Uh, so I need a motion to accept the minutes of uh, March 12th, 2024. So moved. Second. There's a second. Any further discussions? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's been approved. The next meeting, calendars. What did I do with my calendar? Oh, it's over there. Okay. Next meeting. Saver, you're on vacation again? Again. Yes, I'm on the first Tuesday. Okay. Of the so month, we do. Who's got the calendar? The, uh, you have the calendar? I have a calendar. All right, Jim. What's the second week, Tuesday? Because the, the first 14th. week. The 14th? Maybe. The second the week? The 14th of May is the second Tuesday. Yeah, I'm in Montana on the 7th. Okay, so May 14th is the second Tuesday? Yep. Is everybody available? Yes. That's okay with me. I, I, won't, be, I won't be joining you. I know. Because I'll be on, off the committee, but I would just like to say, too, it's been a pleasure being on the committee, working with Savory, Joanna, Jim. For like three months. Let, yeah, but I know that I like what you say. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I enjoyed it very much. Okay. It really, it really was. I, I just, I, I, I wish we could have got that uh, uh, change, big, big change. building there. You that would have been nice. Oh yeah. boy, that would have been really nice. But well, you know, Hillwood said um, when way back when I was talking to Sharon when she was still on board. She said that Hillwood had, or not Hillwood, whatever that fellow her, she was communicating with, that uh, Hillwood's re representative. From, from Hillwood, yeah. yeah. Uh, he said to her, well, you know, we really, you know, the economy is causing this issue here. He said, but uh, we could come back in 2025. He told her that. Well, well, 2025 is just around the corner, but I don't I, know. Well, I think a lot's going to depend on how the economy. The, yeah. I think a lot's going to depend on the election in November. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, true. Anything, right? True. Yeah, which, I think, uh, what yeah. direction the economy and the right. country is going to go in? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's going to determine a lot. That really will. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, it would be nice if we get them home. back. Uh, you know, what really bothers me is that these little parcels. You know. These guys aren't going to care too much about us helping Carver. Yeah, they're going to have to have more fire protection, more police protection. If the people who live there, who people who come in, are going to start moving into Carver or around, you know, yeah. those are kinds of things that Hillwood took care of. What he concerns me about, about that is that uh, Route 44 has been holding this property for years now. 
spending millions of dollars. They haven't. And they got nothing back yet. Nothing. That, that bothers me. Well, that's why they split it up the way they did, because they can they can get rid of a couple of small parcels, 15, yeah. 20 acres here. That's where I was going to go. You got to you gotta start get some money doing back. some sort of return back on your exactly. investment. You can't just no, keep somebody, investing money and not get anything back. back. I mean, what are they going to do? I mean, it's, residential can't go there, right? Residential can't go there. Yeah, no, okay. it's a business district. It's no, a green it's business a commercial. district. Commercial. Yeah. Yeah. That, that concerns me, because they've got, they're, they're just, they haven't made any money back yet. And it's just a ton of money out the door. Well, I think th I think that they have some fairly substantial small businesses that are looking at that a couple of the sites that they're trying to put in. So, um, you know, and anything has to go before the site review board. Yeah. And that's yeah. gonna that's gonna make sure that the fire equipment and police coverage is taken care of. Okay. The planning board is the site review. Uh, no, it's it's everybody's fire. Uh, oh, EMS, okay. police, uh, Fuss and O'Neill, okay. our town. Uh, is that designers. something Tom Bott would get? Tom Bott is part of it. Con oh. uh, I, the, our new conservation agent is part of it. Um, who else is on that? Fire chief. Uh, I think police. Mark Townsend. Oh, from the board. I think, I think one member of the select board's on it. Okay. Fire, police, EMS. What is that? That working group. No, the oh. no the site review board. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. That looks at anything that's coming in before it's it's separate from the planning board. Oh, it is. Yes. Oh. Okay. This is where Fuss and O'Neill and those people yes. are involved. This is where the the final plans are looked at by experts in their own fields. Fire looks at it to make sure that all the exits are there and that there's enough water. Police looks at it to see how many employees they're going to have and can they take care of them. EMS looks at it for uh, accessibility, things like that. So I remember listening to the planning board and they said, oh, they're going to have this with the conditions. I gave you all all that particular email that uh, Tom Bott had sent, right, just like two months ago. Um, the planning board... Um, Wanted to make sure that Fussin and O'Neill, I think, is that's the board um, that they were looking at some of these things that you had talked about. Um, well, they have to. I mean, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Why we so hired. that's the Carver's representative, I would think, right? The that's Carver's engineering firm. Engineering firm. And usually, you get great input from the fire department and the police department and all that kind of yes, stuff on fire, oh, especially this. When you, yeah, yeah, when you start looking at commercial yeah, development. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah saying, water. Get, the yeah. fire department. The oh, water. Yeah. And, oh boy, that's oh, an yeah. issue. We don't want to get involved. You talk in about that. subject matter experts. Those top three guys. Wow. Boy, yeah. oh boy, was I impressed doing that whole Hillwood yeah. thing. Yeah. Wow. They know their stuff, and they didn't yeah. really have to look it up. It was here. This was the Hillwood uh, group? No, our, our, no, our guys. Oh, our guys. That's what I'm saying. The chief normally, and the deputy yeah. chief and the assistant deputy yeah. chief. They were just from uh, Internally, you mean normally, the police yeah, chief or the fire? Fire. fire. Stuff. fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, chief oh, Doofley yeah. was fine, too, uh, but he had a lot less to be concerned about than well, the fire. Well, you know what also, thank God, when Hillwood came, he spent a lot of money. He gave us money. He gave the uh, fire department money. Oh, yeah. So uh, the fire, uh, he, Weston, Mr. what's his first name? Craig. Craig. Craig Weston has the experience now so he can do what you're saying. He also saying. has the data. Well, oh, yeah. he's, he collected it all. Yeah, but everything, he's got it. He's everything got he pulled it. from that, uh, that funded Study is yeah. still available. Yeah, right. So he, he just put in, in a tremendous amount of work. He did tremendous was, amount of work. They all did. Even even uh, um, the assistant chief with the with the chemicals. Yeah, he was great. Anyway. Yeah. So okay. we have to be proud of that. You know, the yes. only the part is that I don't want Kava holding the bag for anything that they people can't come up with monies, you know, because Hillwood had deep pockets and they 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 gave they what do. was it, seven point two like million dollars? Yeah, it was gonna be seven point two million. Seven two million dollar contract for the fire, including the the fire. EMT and the police, and they they bought equipment, uh, a new ladder truck, and, they and built the they addition. They were going to. They were going to. They were going to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, was, yeah. You have to have a development. To, yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. It. Well, everything was going good. <laughs> right. No, but I think that's a normal course of action for a developer to pay for things like that. Yeah. That's not. They didn't. Balk. That's not. 
abnormal. Yeah. Right? But it, but it was it was it was such a uh, cooperative effort. Yes, too. yes, it really was. I mean, they uh, we, we we had some needs. They weren't outrageous, and and they were a very reputable. Uh, business entity to deal with. Yes, well, they were they, a pro they company. They really were. And that, Absolutely. That went, and that went so well. Yeah. yeah. No, they are. I've yeah. worked with them before. Yeah. They're very reputable. Oh, Hillwood, very, Hillwood, yeah. Yeah, and they'll, they're up to their word. If they tell you something, they'll do it. They yeah. were good. They were yeah. easy to get along with. They were cooperative both ways. It was, uh, it it was, was. It was a, a good it was. Whole, yeah. whole thing. And they built a be wonderful website. He paid, they, they not did. our website, but they build their own website. Yes, they did a nice job. Nice job of that. And then they, um, Route 44, remember the time we, Route 44, um, we were on their property and they had um, a small trailer or whatever. And then uh, uh, George, not yeah. George, but Bob, Bob Delhomme yeah. gave a dissertation. And yeah. uh, the police were there, the fire were there, the car, we had a cover reporter at that time, didn't we? Yeah, the picture on the front page looked yeah. like I was guarding I was the donuts. I was just going to say, yeah. <laughs> That's standing a very the job. Like what are you yeah, talking like, about? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they I after be upset about that. we had the initial right. the initial introduction in his and then we all traversed over to the furthest part of that property we could see the Middleborough dump and so forth and all yeah. of us were fa there was a picture right. from Carver yeah. reporter all of us were facing the hill where they were going to build that particular um, yeah. 1.5 okay, million so square uh, foot yeah make a motion to adjourn yep. oh. Second. Further discussion? Being none? All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Give me your time. Oh, 748. Gotta shut it down?